This is the strangest glen I know in Scotland. Charles Darwin came here fresh from his voyage on the Beagle to try to explain what was happening up there and he got it spectacularly wrong. These were the mystery, etched into every hill in Upper Glen Roy, a series of strangely parallel roads. Today, we think we know what caused them, and that's what we're going to explore. So the first weird thing you notice is we are going up the glen and yet we are going downhill. Hmm. You've got to imagine it back there, 1838, 1840, all these scientists coming here to try to explain what those lines actually were. It's really feels a wild and remote glen, does Glenroy, in its upper reaches. And yet it's just off a main road, a really busy road, and there's a road access. It's a great place. Now the legend is they were roads, and they were created by Scotland's giant Fingal, uh, Fingal of Fingal's Cave on Staffa. Obviously that's not the real reason, but Darwin was convinced that they were probably the bed of an ancient sea. He'd been in South America and he'd seen raised, raised beds and thought that's what was happening here. So he spent apparently quite a lot of time trying to find seashells and evidence of sea creatures up there, fossils, and didn't find any because they weren't. You can see why and how, oop, sorry, you can see why and how Darwin would have thought that that was a seabed. Two years later, a Swiss geologist came up with a different explanation, contradicting Darwin. Darwin, however, was convinced he was right and he defended his paper for many years before finally conceding that uh, it was the most spectacular blunder of his career. Mind you, got a few other things right, so he's probably let off that one. Just taking a pause just to come down here and take a look at something because I think this might be interesting. All of that at the sides, all lateral moraine, all relatively recent. But down here in this gorge, this stuff this stuff is 500 million years old. This, less than 20,000, 500 million. Dalridian. I don't know any of this, by the way. This is all stuff I've read. I'm absolutely no geologist. But I find it absolutely fascinating. I've got to catch up with Liz now. <laughs> She's shot up up the glen. This is the first of a number of highlights on this ride, the Falls of Roy. It's not that the ground is steep, it's that the road is made from this very lateral moraine stuff and consequently it's as loose as anything. It skids under my wheels. It's a bit firmer. Liz just said to me, God, this really is a spectacular glen. I'm not sure how I feel about you sharing it with other people on video. Well, it's not exactly a secret, given that there's one of those brown tourist signs to the Glen Roy Ice Age Glen, uh, right down the bottom of the road, on the main road. And as I said, people have been coming here since the 1830s. So, yeah, it's known about. But if you do come here, look after it. 
just realized we've reached near the top of Glenroy here and I've not explained what the parallel roads are. It was that Swiss scientist, Louis Agassiz, who got it right when he said they were the shorelines of a lake that had settled at different levels over time. 20,000 years ago, the harbour was covered with a huge ice sheet, a kilometre thick. This was spreading up the glen, and as it did so, it choked off the rivers. They couldn't flow out because the ice was in the way. And then this all backed up, and what I'm in now became a lake. And that's what the parallel roads are. They are the shorelines of ancient glacial lakes. Or rather, one lake that grew, dammed by ice, filled by rivers. As the lake crept up the hillside, the three main lines were caused by frosts and wave action on what was then the lake shore. They're even marked as a road, drive or track on Ordnance Survey maps. So can they be cycled? The previous evening, in very different conditions, we set out on foot to investigate. But you can't actually see a proper step in the hill. Perhaps without the bracken, they'd be more discernible. But even on the parallel road, we could hardly see them, let alone ride them. Heading east from Glenroy, there are some superb walking through routes into Speyside, and there's a track over the Corrieric Pass. Most of these involve river crossings and long hiker bikes. That was not part of our plan. Instead, we had a more solid objective. This is Lou Connell Bothy, and by all the tools, the great sleeping platforms and stacked wood, it looks like there has been a work party here recently. You know what? I don't think uh, I'll show you inside that Bothy, um, because if you did come here, you should come prepared for anything, especially a cold night. I'm sure you can find out all about it in the MBA's website, goodness me, or even the Bothy Bible, but I think I'll leave it for you to actually see inside when you get here. Could be a really good, uh, good adventure and surprise. I started this video by saying this was probably Scotland's strangest glen, but the strangeness is not just its parallel roads. It's not the amazing geology. The real strangeness here is how remote this feels. No, actually, how remote this really is, considering it is just off one of Scotland's busiest roads. This is an astonishingly beautiful glen. OK, geologists, this is where you head to the comments and tell me all the things I've got wrong. Everybody else, I'd really appreciate it if you give me a thumbs up, subscribe if you are not already, and have a look around the channel, see if you find more that you like. I'll see you again next time. Bye.